So um, tell us about the significance of, you know, that moment playing that for him. Well, we were able to go in the hospital room, and it ended up being maybe a half an hour before he passed away, and uh, telling him how much we loved him and how we'd gotten letters and emails and calls from all over the world, how many people loved him, and uh, what a great influence he had been to all of us. And, uh, you know, we never could play Amazing Grace in concert because when Doc would get to that part about blind, but now I see, he just would tear up, and it was very difficult for him to to sing that part. And he said, it makes me too sad. And it just seemed like the right moment to, to play it for him right then. I just leaned down and played it to his ear. And what was his uh, reaction? or what? Well, he was completely sedated, so yeah. there really wasn't a reaction. Yeah. yeah. But I was just hoping that maybe he could hear, send him off in a, in a song that he, I know he loved, yeah. and now maybe he can see. Do you think uh, even at this point, you know, stage of his, you know, legendary status that he really, really knew how much he meant to people? I think so. Uh, you know, I've been traveling with him for 14 years, and people are always telling him that. And, and me, I, I met him, I mean, I met him in 1972, but I fell in love with his music when I was about 18. And, you know, I'm 65 now. So there's many, many people in the audience that say that to him, that they, they've been listening to his music all their lives. And uh, I, I think he knew. Yeah, he knew. Um, so his legacy, when, when people look back mm -hmm. at Doc, uh, you know, what is his legacy? I think he's one of the greatest American folk musicians that's ever come out of this country. Uh, a fabulous musician in any form of music, but his guitar playing and his singing and really anything he touched was so soulful. He could connect directly kind of to his inner soul and deliver that in a song. And, uh... That was very compelling and, and reached out to people, and people got that and, and loved him for that. I think Bob Dylan described his playing as running water. Uh, how would you describe his playing? Incredibly musical is what I would say, because no matter if he was finger-picking the guitar, his fingers were just dancing on the strings. If he was flat-picking the guitar, a very fast style of playing, uh, they were just dancing on the strings. Same with the banjo. He just knew what notes to put in and what notes to leave out. He had tremendous taste in his playing. And I think that's what people uh, recognized. Even people who didn't know much about music, they just knew that they were hearing something that was super high quality. Uh, how long uh, had you been playing with Doc now? Uh, uh, we started playing, I started playing almost all of his shows in 1998. Yeah. So 14 years. Um, and during that time, uh, you know, what, what was it like for, for you to be on stage with him? To me, uh, playing with Doc those years was pretty much the highlight of my career because I, he was my mentor musically and, uh, and also in the business. And it was just such a joy to play music with him because he had such a great rhythm. Uh, you know, people think of him as a lead guitarist, but as a rhythm guitar player, he was the best. To play over the top of what he was playing for rhythm was just the greatest. He was... Uh, Always played his songs a different way, so you had to be on your toes at every moment and uh, be right there with him because he was right there. He was right there playing that song. He wasn't thinking about something else. He was right there. And so you had to be in the same place. And that was exciting and challenging and fun. Um, along with the music, obviously overcame so much. Was he inspiring to you? Oh, yeah. I mean, he had seen a lot of adversity in his life. And, uh, and yet he was able to have these millions of fans, not through any kind of hype or, you know, publicity particularly, he, just who he was. And people responded, and that kind of charisma just spread all around the world, really. It's a rare thing. Uh, I guess we're kind of in the age of hype. That's yeah. how you get famous. That's right, exactly. Uh, will there ever be another Doc Watson? I can't, there would never be one like, quite like him, because if you think about it, he was born in uh, 1923 in, in an old-timey mountain culture, came up through that, and uh, brought that music and, and culture into the world, and, uh, you know, that generation is going, that generation is going, and there, there were, they had a certain kind of, um, a certain kind of b groundedness that, that we don't, I don't really see much anymore. Um, uh, so once he passed, I mean... 
I don't know, do, has it really sunk in yet, so to speak, that you know, you've lost such a good friend and, and a mentor? Yeah, it has. It did yesterday. And, and uh, of course, I've been seeing him on decline for a couple, you know, a little while now. And um, and then when he went into the hospital, clearly it was probably going to end. And uh, it has sunk in. I'm, you know, just deeply grieved. I just lost a great friend and and a great mentor, somebody who's meant so much to me in my life and helped me so much. I loved him dearly. Anything else you want to add about your friend? What can you tell us that maybe, you know, uh, just observers, we, we don't know? What, what's, what's your favorite or fondest? Uh, you know, one of my fondest memories is yeah. um, Waking up early in the morning in a hotel room next to him, we'd be on tour. I'd be in the room next door, and being a country boy, he got up early. And I would hear him playing his guitar, and this might be 6 a.m. in the morning. I'd still be in bed, and I would just lie there and listen to him playing. And he was all, he would never played songs he played on stage. It was always digging back through his old repertoire and uh, coming up with new things, uh, coming up with old songs that I'd never heard before and would never hear again except through that hotel wall. Yeah. Do you want to do that again, or is that okay? Um, that, that's okay. Is there anything else? I was just going to add that, you know, listening to him through that hotel wall was just a very uh, evocative experience that that I'll never forget. Yeah. Being on stage with him was great too, because from the back of the crowd, somebody would always yell, "We love you, Doc!" <laughs> you know, almost every concert, just somebody in the audience had to do that. And you don't see that very often, and and that person was expressing what. Everybody in the audience felt what I felt. You know, we love you, Doc. Yeah. Uh, in, in my ob observation, uh, he just made everybody feel so comfortable. You know, uh, is that a rare gift? You know. I think so. He he wanted. Uh, he was advised a long time ago by Ralph Rensler to to just pretend like he was in his living room playing for people, and he kept that style on stage. And uh, it's a good style. It really works for people. They realize they're seeing the real thing. They're seeing the real thing. Who's and he's. Uh, delivering what he feels like at that moment, and uh, that's always pretty powerful. Yeah. Where Where does he rank uh, among the greats that we talk about? You know, I, I for, to me he's the greatest American folk musician. Certainly ranking right in there with uh, all the the other greats that other people would say are greats: uh, Jimmy Rogers, Lead Belly, Muddy Waters. Um, you know, those kind of people. Bill Monroe. He's Earl Scruggs. He's right in there and in my book right at the top. Appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thanks, uh, John. He's going to get a few more shots here, if you don't mind. Sure. And, uh, and I'll just turn off my phone here. You know, the phone's... The phone's Sorry about that phone in there. Did that, do we need to do that again? Oh, no, no. Well, you can't hear that. Okay. Um, anyway, so what's next for you? Well, I've always continued to play and perform uh, solo and uh, with my band. So uh, I'll, of course, keep doing that. But I recently put together a tribute show to Doc. I'll, I'll probably take that out some. Yeah. Uh, he had to cancel a show, <coughs> and the, uh, the venue asked me if I would make it a tribute show to Doc. And so I just put together all these pictures and uh, songs and stories of his life, stories that he had told me driving in the car. And, and uh, I, th I think put together a really interesting program. So I want to do that. So. Yeah. When do you think that could possibly come together? Or, or it is together. I just have to find places to do it. I, I never <laughs> thought about doing it again. But now that I see that he's gone, people would really like... I mean, he had great stories. Yeah. Great, great things about going to a healer and trying to be healed from blindness. Dif different things like that that are c really interesting. And uh, so I don't know when I'll do it. Anytime. Yeah. <laughs> Anytime somebody asks. That's awesome. <laughs> that, yeah, that would be great. That would be great. Yeah. Um, well, um, appreciate your time. You got a lot of interviews today, I know, right? Yeah, looks like it. Um, yeah, there have already been quite a few. Yeah. I'm glad to talk about Doc, though. Um, he, was a great, he was a great man. How did you, uh, do you remember the first time you met him? I like, definitely remember the first time I met him. It was <laughs> 1972, backstage at a festival in Livonia, Georgia. And... Uh, he was just sitting under an arbor where the, was, that was the backstage. There was nobody else around. He had just come off stage. This was 1972. So I went and started talking to him, telling him how much I loved his playing. And um, 
then I just asked him how, how blind people dream. I was just curious. And he said, uh, well, we dream in feelings, pure feelings. And I thought, wow, that's, that's interesting. And then 20 years later, we were working together on a television show, this show Fire on the Mountain I used to host. And uh, I asked him if he remembered somebody asking him that question. He said, yeah, nobody ever asked me that before. I said, well, I, I didn't really follow up. I wanted to know, were you talking about feelings of the heart or were you talking about feelings of the touch? He said, I was talking about both. So I guess that's how blind people dream. But he remembered that all those years. I've got to tell you, I've been racking my brain. I've got to find a way out I'm getting tired of this continual rain A change is coming, no doubt It's been a too long time With no peace of mind And I'm ready for the times to get better A long, lonely time With no peace of mind and I'm ready for the times to get better. 